بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Chapter 78 Surat An-Nabak And whatever comes after it It is all known to be part of Juzu' Amma Or Juzu' An-Nabak The first surah is Surat An-Nabak The surah that deals with the great incident or news And this particular juzu now what is meant by juzu the scholars have divided the Quran into 30 parts now the Quran is composed of 114 chapters beginning with chapter 1 al-fatiha and ending with chapter 114 nas, surah nas so we have 114 surah and they translate surah into a chapter and the Quran itself is divided into 30 juz, 30 parts that may include one or more surahs and some surahs may include one or two parts like for example surah al-Baqarah chapter 2 it has more than one juz in it now if you look at this the last juzu, the last part, which is surah number 78 onwards until 114, this is known as juzu 30. And it's well known among the Muslims because it's the last and it's the easiest to memorize. So the majority of Muslims, if not all, memorize it by heart. Juzu amma, they call it. And this surah, surah 78, is known as Surah An-Naba. It has 40 verses to it. And the surah is Makki. And what do we mean by Makki? Well, scholars of the sciences of Quran, which is a separate science. The sciences of the Quran is a science that deals with the related events surrounding the Quran. So it deals with the abrogated verses of the Quran, when it was revealed, where it was revealed, what is meant by the general verses and the specific verses. It deals with the qira'at and the difference between them. So when we look at this surah, An-Naba, chapter 78, we see that it is Makki. What is Makki? Scholars divided the chapters of the Quran into Makki and Madani. And what is meant by Makki and Madani? Makki is related to Mecca. Madani is related to Medina. And we know that the Prophet ﷺ lived most of his life in Mecca. When he was at the age of 40, revelation started. Until he was 53, years old he was ordered then to migrate to medina where he spent the following 10 years and he died when he was 63 years of age sallallahu alaihi wasallam so the scholars said that whatever was revealed before the migration this is called makki and whatever was revealed after the migration to medina this is called madani and each one has its specific characteristics. And they are different to one another. Some scholars even went on to say that the Makki is whatever was related to the location, whether it was before or after the migration, and the Madani was as well. But this is not the most authentic opinion of scholars. Some say that it depends on who it was addressing. But again, this is a weak opinion. The most authentic is what was before migration. This is called Makki and 
what was after migration. This is known as Madani. What are the benefits of knowing what is Makki and what is Madani? Well, first of all, it gives you a better understanding of the interpretation and the explanation of the Quran. When you know that these verses are addressing the disbelievers, are addressing the idol worshippers. And it's different if it was in Medina, then it was addressing the Muslims in general, or specifically the Jews and the Christians. So it's different. And among the benefits that we know which verse abrogates the other. So if a verse was revealed in Mecca and then a few years later, another verse was revealed in Medina and we're not able to combine and join them together, then we know that the latter abrogated the first one. And this is mentioned in the Quran, abrogation is part of the Quran because Allah Azza wa reveals verses in accordance to the situation of the recipients. For example, we know that the Arabs were so into wine, they loved wine. So Allah Azza wa Jal, with his kindness and mercy, did not prohibit wine immediately. It was prohibited on three different situations. So the last one abrogated the two in the beginning. So the first one stated that the people ask you about gambling intoxicants. Tell them that there are benefits in it and a lot of harm. And the harm is far greater than the benefits. So it didn't tell them don't do it, but it gave them a hint. Then another verse came where Allah told them not to pray while in the state of intoxication. So now, okay, then there are times that we can drink, which is after Isha probably, because from Isha prayer till Fajr prayer, it's like seven or eight hours, maybe 10 hours. Well, this is a long time to become sober. And then the last stage where Allah said that this is work of shaitan, you should refrain from intoxicants. It's completely prohibited. So abrogation is there in Quran. So one of the advantages of knowing which is Makki and which is Madani, to know the timings and then we could tell that this latter one is the one that abrogates the others. Also, to know that the history of the revelation and how it was gradual and how the Sharia law was given to us in this form of segmentation, if you wish, or in coming in parts. It also tells us that there are different ways of giving da'wah. So giving da'wah to idol worshippers is not like giving da'wah and calling those who are Muslims. There are different means and methodologies and subjects to focus on. I cannot go to a university and talk to them without evidences that appeal to their logic. While if I go to my congregation, all what I have to say is, this is what Allah says. And they take it for granted and they'll accept it. So you have to be selective. And this shows you that when addressing the people of Mecca, it was different than addressing the other people of Medina. And it also gives us a glimpse of the biography of the Prophet ﷺ, how he managed to live in Mecca and how he managed to live in Medina. And it also gives us light on how the Quran was preserved and how the scholars managed to document each and every stage of the revelation of the Quran. And by this, they know what was revealed in winter, what was revealed in summer, what was revealed in Mecca, what was revealed in Medina, what was revealed in the expeditions of the Prophet ﷺ, etc. Now, there are specific characteristics of Makki surahs. So, Surah al naba is a Makki surah. So, what are the characteristics of the Makki surahs? How can we differentiate between Makkis and Madanis if we did not know when they were revealed? Scholars gathered few points, not entirely 100% fitting all the Makki surahs, but in general, it is. So they say that every surah that has an oath, where Allah Azza wa 
swears with something. And Allah says, وَالشَّمْسِ وَضُحَاهَا By the sun and the daylight. Allah is swearing. So all surahs that have an oath, then this is Makki. Every surah that has kalla, which is nay, then this is a Makki surah. Surah that begins with disjointed letters. Alif, lam, mim, ra, ha, mim, etc. Surahs which have a verse of prostration. And we know that there are a number of surahs that you recite a verse and there is a sign saying that you have to prostrate for recitation. Stories of the prophets, except chapter 2, Al-Baqarah. It has stories of a prophet, but other surahs, these are all in the Meccan period. Beginning with, O oh, you people, Ya Ayyuhan Nas. So this is a sign that it is a Makki surah. All surahs that begin with Alhamdu. So we have Surah Al-Fatiha, we have Surah Al-Kahf, we have Surah Fatir, etc. Surah Al-An'am. All of these begin with Alhamd, then this is a Makki surah as scholars say. Now, does this surah have any abrogated verses of the Quran? And the answer is no. It is a surah that has no abrogation in it whatsoever. So what is the general theme of the surah? The surah speaks about this great news that Allah Azza wa Jal has sent. So it is addressing the great news, an naba And what is an naba What is the great news that they are asking one another and they are arguing about? Well, this is what we will find after the break, inshallah. So stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. So, what is the general theme of the surah? In the beginning, it speaks about the disbelievers and how they are inquiring and asking about the great news. And then it moves on to talk about the day of judgment, the day of reckoning, and also it talks about Allah's great favors and blessing upon his servants. And then it talks about the day of judgment, the day of separation, and what is the result of disbelieving, and what is the adobe of the disbelievers, and what they will suffer of torment, and at the same time, it concludes with what the believers would be rewarded with on the day of judgment and how the disbeliever would wish on that day that he was nothing and that he was not created. So let us begin with verse 1. Allah the Almighty says, and this translates to the meaning of what are they asking one another? Now, when we have such a question, is Allah asking us? Definitely not, because Allah Azza wa Jal knows. So, in Arabic, there are different types of questions. Some of them are rhetorical. Some of them are to draw your attention. Some of them are to give information through asking you a question. So it's like saying to someone who does something wrong and inappropriate, are you crazy? I'm not expecting an answer to be yes or no. I'm telling him, you are crazy. So in this sense, when Allah is saying, what are they asking one another about? So. This is a question that brings the people's attention. So when I hear such a question, I said, hmm, what are they asking one another about? This is an interesting question. Okay, what is the answer? The answer is, They are asking one another about the great news. And what is meant by the great news? Now, 
The Quran, one of its beautiful attributes is that it is in Arabic and it can carry more than one meaning for the same thing. But bear in mind that the general theme of the Quran, the majority of the verses of the Quran have one meaning. Everyone understands these meanings. There is a portion of the Quran that has more than one meaning, yet these meanings are an evidence of the diversity of the Quran, not any contradiction or conflict. In Arabic, it's the same thing, because one thing could mean two or three or four things, but they do not contradict or conflict. Rather, they go in the same line. For example, in Surah Al-Fatiha, we say, المستقيم, Guide us to the straight path. What is the straight path? Some say it is the Quran. Some say it is Islam. And if you look into these two different meanings, Quran is different than Islam, but they all go through the same stream. So if you follow Islam, you're following the Quran, and if you follow the Quran, you'll fall into Islam. So it's the same meaning. So when we look at this great news, and naba that they are asking one another about. What is it? Some interpreters, and when we talk about interpreters, we're referring to the school of Al-Ma'thur. Now, hold a minute. What is the school of Al-Ma'thur? Can I register in that? Well, it's not a school per se, in the sense that it is a school of thought. Now, when you come to Tafsir al-Quran, you have two major schools. One is a tafsir bil athar those who only give tafsir through a hadith or a narration and there is another tafsir which is bil ra'i which is by intellect and logic in a sense so a tafsir bil athar means that i would not interpret a verse of the quran unless the prophet i some interpreted it or the companions or the tabi'een, the students of the companions. And these are the best of generations. The Prophet said, alayhi the best of generations is my generation. And those who follow them, and those who follow them. So it's the generation of the prophets and the companions, then the tabi'een, the followers of the companions, then tabi'i tabi'een, the followers of the followers of the companions. These are the famous and most trustworthy and the best generation ever to walk the earth. This is what the Prophet said This means that if you would like to explain or make a tafsir of ayah, let us see what the companions said. And who are the best of the companions to give tafsir of the Quran? Well, we have Abdullah bin Mas'ud, we have Ubay ibn Ka'b, we have Ali ibn Abi Talib on top of the list, we have Abdullah ibn Abbas, and other great companions of the Prophet The other school is what is known as a tafsir bil ra'i. They do not depend on the narrations, but rather depend on other tools, such as the Arabic language, poetry. Poetry is the thing that preserves Arabic. So to understand the meaning of words, you have to go to the origin of the Arabs, which is the poetry, so they understand this with it. And that is why there are levels of explaining and giving tafsir of the Quran. The best is tafsir al-Quran bil Quran. The best way to understand the Quran is to explain it by itself. So we will come to mention those, inshallah, while going through. What is a tariq Allah explains it in the third verse. Al-Najm al-Thaqib. So we know that Al-Najm al-Thaqib is the tafsir of Al-Tariq. And we will come to explaining this. If we do not have a verse of the Quran to explain this, we move on to the hadith of the Prophet So when Allah Azza wa Jal talks about a particular thing, 
for example, on passing on the Sirat, which is a bridge over Jahannam, over hell, and how would people pass on it in the verse in Surah Maryam, wa in minkum illa wariduha, that each and every one will pass over hellfire. And Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, asked the Prophet how is that? And he explained that to her. So now this is the Prophet explaining the Quran with the Quran, or him explaining the Quran with his own saying, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If this is not possible, then we go to the companions. And if we don't find the explanation of the companions, we go to the tabi'een. And if not, then we use the Arabic language with the previous forms of tafsir so that we would get everything else into line. So, what are they asking about? It is the great news. So what is the great news? Some scholars say that it is the message of the Prophet ﷺ. Others say that it is the Qur'an. And others say that is the day of resurrection. And finally, others say that it is the torment and the horrific events of the day of judgment. And all are almost the same. Because what the Prophet came with, his message, is based on the Qur'an. And the Qur'an is warning the people of the day of judgment and what they will face. And it is also warning them about the horrific events that will take place on that day. So there is no difference in all of these four things. So this is what the disbelievers are arguing about. And all prophets and messengers of Allah came with this message to establish worshiping Allah Azza wa Jal, submission of each and everyone's soul to the commands of Allah Azza wa Jal, to know that there would be a day of reckoning and to tell the people that there would be heaven and that there would be hell. This is all the time we have. Inshallah, we will finish some of the beautiful verses of Surah al naba chapter 78, when we meet next. Until then, fi amanillah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.